Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is David Bianco. So this is part two of my video visit to hand-drawn pressings and hand-drawn records here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Addison, Texas. So the Chief Creative Officer Dustin Blocker was my first interview to discuss the business. Now I'm spending time with Joe Fink, who is their QA and traffic manager. He kind of seems like a, a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of guy, and um, took us on a nice tour of the facility, walking through the processes, talking about the business, talking about test pressings, talking about how they've come to life with these four presses that they have, and the whole gamut that it takes to produce a record. So that tour is coming up next here on the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. Okay, we're here at Hand Drawn Records and Hand Drawn Pressing Plant. We're going to ring the bell and hopefully get let in. Oh man. Oh gee. Thank you. So, uh, this end down here, this is where everything's getting ready to leave. Kind of the tail end of the operation. All the real action and, and uh, I'd say synchronization, chaos sometimes, all happens down here. Everything from records coming in the door to okay. actually leaving and going out the door. Right. Um, if you see on the floor, these white big bags that we have over here, yep. they're all color. Um, different colored nurdles, um, which is what everybody likes to see is cool colors. You can actually, uh, this is a transparent red. Ooh, neat. So yeah, that's going to make you a transparent red record. Um, we've got every color you can want, really. And we've even had uh, color codes come in and just match them. You know, like they do at Home Depot, that's a transparent black. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a purple swirl. Purple swirl. Yeah. Wow. So that's a different size nurdle. Oh yeah. In a different it shape. Like a flat, yeah. So it melts differently. Yeah. These all have their own melting points and their different characteristics. The press techs that are over there. Okay. They're the guys that throw all that out. Yeah. And it's a, It's not a one size fits all. Um, it's a. Uh, you have to work with the, the material that you've got. Sometimes they can be finicky, depending on whether it's transparent or opaque or uh, just what it is. That's they making the noise over there. Yeah, we call that Thelonious Punch. Um, Thelonious Munch. Yeah, Punch. He's got Punch. It, it's punching out the center labels and uh, dropping the records in here. So as I say that, it stops. But what it does is it'll punch these out and leave it just like plain oh. vinyl. No paper. Right. So that can Nothing be reused. Else. This is all reused. Recycled. Recycled. We uh, put it in our, our, our corpse grinder is what we call this thing okay. here. Um, so the records or the flash will go in to the hopper there, grinds it all up, spits it out, and we fill up these Gaylords with reusable material. Yeah. up there. There you go. There's some more over here that you guys can get a good look at as well. It's like a sandy beach. <laughs> wow. I'm put those on my Sunday, my uh, ice cream Sunday. <laughs> Wouldn't be too yeah. good, I don't think. I can't guarantee you the taste would be uh, anything you'd want to enjoy. Go down a little bit, yeah. So again, these are all different recycled, rewind. Yeah. Um, all different colors of uh, black will eat any color other than white and uh, sometimes you'll see on your record it looks like a little smoke or a little wisp and mm. all that is is there was a little bit of white in the regrind uh, and, it, and that's that's what's good nothing wrong with the record yeah. um it's just white is the only thing that black won't eat this is virgin raw black material this is uh brand new you get Right around 4,000 records out of one of these. Okay.
And then again, the colors on these are just, they're yeah. cool. Um, the ratio depends on, excuse me, on how we're trying to get things made down. Um, I wouldn't say it's 60-40. I wouldn't say it's 80-20. It, it varies through all of it, but it is a majority virgin material that's going into each right here. Okay. So here are the workhorses, the, the one that's going all the way. These first two, well, these two presses right here, excuse me, were the first two that uh, Warm Tone, a company that we partnered with out of Canada, actually ever made. And they built them right here on this floor. Oh, they all really? came down, crates, boxes, and pieces, and put it together like an erector set put it together serial numbers are one and two <laughs> this is johnny and that's willie um what better names to start with you yeah. know especially here in texas yeah so when the pressing actually happens here's the mix that's going on for this record right here so this is input this is in this is what's going in this is just that you got some green clear it's like blue white ever so often but that's the mix and believe it or not when that comes through here it creates this custom color that we have running right now we got a record in the press currently but what's happening over here is this building a puck a biscuit some people call it but the puck happens right there and when the press opens up it's these are going to grab the puck yep. and all move into the press all in one motion. So now it's opening up. So the puck, puck goes in. in. A label's on bottom, B label's on top. Goes under pressure. Here's where the hot water and the cold water come into play. Hot water helps with setting the record during dwell. The cold water helps to set it in place and cool everything out. Here's our trimming plate. Press is getting ready to open. Swing arm will go in. Put that on our trimming, cutting plate. Trim the exterior edge. Yep. There we go. Let's take that. Move it onto the platform. It comes out warm, so. Yeah. <laughs> this is warm. This is not licorice. <laughs> this is not licorice. But we take all these trimmings yeah. and uh, we gather those up and they go into the grinder ah. and they get ground back up sure. to make Reusable. more records. Reusable. Yes. So there's yes. your end product right there. Yep. That's our custom color that we're looking at. Let's see if we've got one over here. I'll hold up and show you guys. Nice. This is Mike. He's one of our uh, hey, press Mike, techs, how you doing, buddy? and he's one of the first customers that we have here. Wow. When our guys pull these records off, they look at them and see if there's anything on this record that they wouldn't want on their record. Yeah. If there's a mark visually, we yeah. take it over and we put it on the turntables over there and see if it makes an audible sound. If it does make a sound, then we, we've got to stop and figure out what's going yeah. on. And make sure we get it fixed right. A sound that you didn't expect. <laughs> a sound that wasn't there, wasn't on the test. Um, any kind of imperfection like that, we develop um, our systems in order to try to fix those right away. Sure. But every record is touched by the text that makes them. Yeah. Yeah, that's got a lot of dead wax on it. That means it's uh, cut toward the outside, which is good. Right. That's a, a new record uh, from Shane Smith and the Saints. Okay. Um, those guys are just climb it up like you wouldn't believe and uh they trusted us to bring that one to life man. Right. they were just in the other day signed a whole bunch of units right here nice. in, at, at, the, at the plant Beautiful. more records going over here they're running the other side to that same that shane smith record but willie <laughs> willie's got it going on yeah. man <laughs> these two presses being number one and number two they're bona fide they've ran more units than any other warm cell presses in the world. Really? Uh, yeah, it's it's staggering the amount 
that these guys have been able to crank out. They want to work. They really enjoy doing what they do. And uh, once we get it set up and dialed in between our stampers and our temperatures and our techs getting the, the sound quality that they want, we have to just maintain that. Uh, check every um, stack. There's records pulled off and gone through QA. And like I said earlier, if there's an issue, we talk about it and resolve it to get back to good. Sure. Over here, a uh, bunch of different colors as well. These are things that we use to do custom blends. Like this is a copper. And we got another bronze kind of thing that's going on. More yeah. swirls. It's amazing. Uh, it's like finger painting with hot wax. <laughs> yeah. So do they, uh, let's say they see the output and then they go, oh, it's, it's losing a little of the yellow or whatever. Then they can mix some into the input. Yep. Yep. That, yep. And, and that's done frequently. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to not only stay on top of the sound, but on, on top of the mix as well. Yeah. And sometimes when you're starting, you'll be transitioning from one color to another color. Yeah. And you have to take that time to clear the hopper clear. out. Watch get the that. extruder cleared out, and then you have right. to dial in that color, and because right. uh, you'll get residual from the other. Yep, yeah. yep, that happens a lot. Yeah. Okay. So here's uh, the two areas that we do uh, all our test press. Well, not really test press uh, production runs Validation. are listened to over yep. here. So we have a turntable that's a little more expensive, and then we have a turntable that is very affordable oh, right. on this yep. side. And Interesting. We do eye on that. <laughs> yeah, it's great, man. It's, it's automatic. Uh, it's a great beginner table, and uh, it has a tone arm weight, which is what I think everyone needs on a minimum. Yeah, yeah at least because if you don't, right. you're just all over the place. And yeah. It'll make you hate records. <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, this uh, this is what we listen to. If it sounds great on here, of course we want it to sound great on there. That's the uh, yeah. to be able to sound good on no matter whose setup it is so yeah that's really nice touch so over here these two are the new guys so yeah. we got johnny and willie over here yeah chris and waylon are on this side okay so we got the band back together so to okay. speak it's the high women and uh it's just our tribute to, to true texas great music and all these iconic machines, things but they're all sober now yeah they, they are sober. they are Completely sober. Uh, good job, guys. <laughs> it's a struggle. Every day, it's though. a struggle. Yeah, right. <laughs> we have AA meetings at noon. You know, yeah, you get yeah. them together. We got to. <laughs> right here's uh, another end going towards and out. Another classic. How the heck did they get this color out of that recipe? Yeah. I, I'm no good with colors, so it just yeah. blows my mind. You'll see the same things happening. Puck. The puck's being made right now. Labels A and B are on the top, and we're getting ready to yeah, go into press. Labels. See the A and B labels. Yep, that's how they get put on. Yeah, right, here we go. <laughs> here it comes. Get ready for it. Label goes in line. Right down there. Smash. This is the album that's coming off of this press. Ah. So that's your color mix, what that turns into. There you go. Well, Casey's here doing uh, QA, checking all the records, uh, making sure if we have an issue with the center hole, he'll, he'll burr that out, make sure it goes on uh, to your turntable. You're not having to force it on there. And, uh, it's just a clean look. Everything's checked like that. Seldom do you have to do many in a run, but when they're when they're there, we like to we like to remove them. First thing I ever do when I get a record is I start picking at the center. Yeah, yeah. There's something wrong with if it. If there's but. something there, yeah. yeah. Um, but do you guys have? Because uh, it reminds me of the old manufacturing days of a, what we call the go no go days. Yeah. If it would fit or not fit. Yeah. Because I've noticed uh, some records from one of the plants got really tighter all of a sudden and they they dialed in their spec a little bit because they were people were complaining it was a little bit too loose so the center pin that we have 
on this machine. The one that comes down and goes through with the labels and the puck, that is specifically machined to the same size as your turntable. So that that's where it's cut okay. like that. Okay. This over here, if we have something that's just showing a little bit of plastic from the middle, the burr, burr, a burr, burr. Yeah. and they take it and we just remove it, clean it, yeah, make it look good. Well, it's a nice touch because sometimes you don't get that. It's just kind of rough. You yeah, know? yeah. And you, I always tear up a label trying to get it off when I do that. Here's our stampers. There People we go. Uh, how do we get the music on the record? This is well, critical. This is no stamper, no record. <laughs> these are stampers that come in. All right. Yeah. There's a nickel plating on these. Okay. And uh, basically, these are the grooves that are up. They're kind of standing in the record. And when you push right. this down, you get the you get the image, negative impression. Negative impression. Negative that. Right. Well, like you're. Uh, the same That's technology right. that's been around since Edison. But what we've done is uh, modernized it a bit and found a way to replicate it to where the first record and the last record will sound exactly the same. About how many records do you press out of one stamper? Do you... uh, they're good for a thousand units before okay. deterioration starts. Okay. Um, so that means if you've got a... 30,000 unit run, you know, you're going to need 10, 12 sets of stampers yes. in order to make it through that. So. What are your, what is your max run? I mean, what's the most you've ever had to do? Man, we've had like up to 60,000 units. 60, okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know how much you dealt with big labels, for example, or things like that. We have partnerships with both. Um, okay. We work with the bigger labels, uh, the, the ones that everyone knows of. And they, uh, a real mission when we started um, was to help artists, the right. smaller artists here, right. get their record because we were trying to get records for our friends' bands and we couldn't do it. We couldn't yeah, find what, anybody. 10 years ago or um, It was seven, seven, seven years, years ago. ago. Okay. Seven years ago is when we got these presses. Okay. Um, about 12, 11 years ago is when we started hand drawn records. And that's okay. when we were trying to gotcha. help other bands and get records for them. and. There were just no presses around, you know, okay. or if you, there was a press, you were just a number and you'd have to wait forever until you got it. Absolutely. You didn't know what you were going to get. And we decided there's got to be a better way. And that's when, luckily, we were able to, to find a company to partner with. And we said, let's make a new mousetrap, so to speak. It, there wasn't anybody holding our hand or showing us the way or yeah. giving any trade secrets like that. We had to come in and. You know, be the guys that live, eat, yep. sleep, and breathe this stuff. Build it from the ground up. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's it. Everybody that works here, they're some sort of record nerd. Um, Avery's an author, you know. Um, uh, Dell back there, he's a drummer. Um, but everybody is a musician or has that passion right. that goes along with this kind of medium. Critical. And uh, if you don't, you don't, I mean, yeah. you don't, don't apply because yeah. you're not going to fit. So. No. But it's yeah. great to have the staff that we do be as committed as they are. But right before the holidays, they've been packing up, and uh, all of our stations are clear right now. That means that the pack team is even with the uh, the production team. So as soon as these records are done through QA, they go into pack and then back to the shrink wrap and out the door. So this is the flow that goes from the presses yep. through QA to get packaged into the sleeves for the record correct yeah so everywhere from those nurdles of the different colors that i showed you yeah. with the uh the regrind and stuff over there it's a filling kinda in got a horseshoe here <laughs> yeah it's a little yeah. bit of a racetrack kind yeah. of thing going on like i said we have one indoor and one outdoor for our shipping yeah. and uh we send out uh two to four trucks a day okay now are these like waiting to get those are those are waiting for they're in some form of uh a little bit of we call it i guess limbo is not really a good word but they're hanging on for something right so either this doesn't have the sleeve in yet right or the sticker that you need in order to put on the outside you if don't. someone's going to sell something down it's a sticker yeah it's always a sticker. it's always a sticker. Yeah. damn but, stickers yeah this uh <laughs> and Everybody will tell you that, but yeah. these guys, they've all been QC'd, they're all signed off, 
by everyone that worked on it. And uh, these records are ready to be packed sure. once we have the final pieces to put yeah, that Yeah, you don't have together. much. I mean, it just, yeah. Sir? I well, see so you don't have much to, to go. No, no, just, no, no. Yeah. These guys are packed up and ready to go, waiting on a, 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 a sticker. Is sticker. what that one is, yep. <laughs> and right now we have some of these that are being shipped and wrapped, but we need more stickers to finish the run. It's always the little thing. It is. It is. And that those little, stickers are important. They really want those things. Oh, yeah. That's the first thing I tear off. I, I know. Them, it's but a, that's some people me. die to keep them. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Everybody's different. So back down this flow, this record right here, this was the one that I showed you that was pressing over there it's on it's Wayland. It. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's that purple and white. Yep. So we take this from here, then take one final look at what's going on. Those go into the jackets, sleeves here, jackets over there, and then onto the carts and ready to go out the door. Is this a single disc record? Um, actually, no. This wow. one's two, but it's a wide mouth single. Nope, sorry. Uh, it's, it is an actual gatefold. It's two. a gatefold. Yeah, it is okay. a gatefold. Okay. But I, we do some that are wide mouth singles. We've done triple albums that actually have one on each side. It's a triple fold, trifold. Trifold, yeah. And uh, we've done uh, triples where it's a wide mouth on uh, one side of the gate and a single on the other. So mm. these are all records that are waiting to go out. Well, these are se seven inch. Yep. Lumineers, I know them. Yeah. Yeah. We've nice. worked with uh, the Lumineers and Dual Tone for quite some time. This is that Shane Smith record that, that they came in and signed the oh, other day. Yeah, we saw that. Um, yeah. Really, really great bunch of guys. Nice. Oh, I see stickers. Oh, gosh. Stickers. Yeah. And we, oh, have, a, we have a sticker machine uh, that's, uh, that saves things a lot. Sticker this. <laughs> all, all over here is uh, print material that are ready for uh, jobs that are going to be coming down the line. Okay. And uh, gotcha. th that's this is just set up, staged, ready to go to the next pack. What about then? Do these get wrapped or they get yeah. put in a right here? They, sleeve? Um, this is uh, the roller coaster of love, we like to call it. It's uh, <laughs> we load up the records here and they'll come down the coaster. They actually go up this conveyor belt. Six flags. <laughs> Stack up right here in the hopper. And then they'll slide off. This is our L bar and our shrink wrapper. So this wraps it in a cellophane bag. Goes down through here into the heat tunnel. And I'll take it through. Comes out the other side. Stickers are applied by this one. And then sticker time. There's your finished product. Yeah, one little sticker on this. Yep. Okay. And from here, we take them and we load them into the the boxer shipping right? boxes. So I'll show you how that works. Cause it's pretty cool. They load this in. And it'll fold the top and the bottom at the same time. You just hit this button. Give it a push. We could all use one of those. <laughs> we used to, when we started, we did these by hand. Every one. Every box was built by hand. Everything was taped by hand. Wow. That is uh, Benny and the Jets, is what we call him. <laughs> when you go by, it prints uh, everything you need right on the side of the box. Ah, so yeah. no need to build stickers or any of that stuff. Same process with the big boxer over there. They'll put two of these in there, tapes the top and bottom all the way down. We palletize everything and uh, take it on over to the wrapper, get it all shrink wrapped, ready to go, and back out the door. Wow. So we take, it, we take it from that little myrtle to retail ready and yeah. 
the next place you see is in the wild, so to speak. I love going out and going, hey, man, we made that record. And that's at a Target. You know, this yeah. is right up the street. Or I've been uh, in L.A. and gone into record stores and go, I made that record. Yeah. You know, and it's just a cool feeling. It's, it is a cool feeling. Not a lot of people in the world get to do what we do. No, absolutely. And uh, the, it's just, I've been record nerd and I have been all my life. I, I did radio for a while. Uh, this I wish I would have got into 20 years ago. You yeah. know, just and when I when I was growing up, I would be the guy that was reading all the liner notes and <laughs> who played what and where was it recorded. Well, those are tough to and, read on a CD, I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and that was really hard. And then now I think, whose hands are those going to get into, and yeah. you know, what person is that going to be? Who are they going to be later? You yeah. Know? So yeah, it's really cool. Um, I love what I do. Yeah. So there's no doubt. That's really. What I love is the efficiency of the operation and the floor space use. You know, it's very effective. Everything's within vis visibility. Yeah. Uh, I really like the closeness and the way it's oriented. Because it's very flow oriented, right? Yeah. Let me that's show you something that, that is key to this operation, and that's our warehouse. Of course. We'll take a quick walk through back okay. there. Uh, if you want to talk about efficiency and things that are coordinated, yeah, that, yeah. you got to see that. All right, let's do it. So the warehouse stuff actually starts right here. Everything will come through the garage door on that side, but it comes down to here to Monica's desk. And Monica is our librarian is kind of what we call her. Mm -hmm. She checks everything in, makes sure that what was on the pallet matches what we were supposed to be getting and keeps track of all that data. Okay. And it's, if she says we have 475 jackets, we have 475 jackets. That's uh, the kind of uh, diligence that she does at her job. She's a perfect person to take control detail. of that. Detail, you yeah, gotta have Such that detail. detail. And, uh, you know, because we're making each one of these is, is a handmade thing. You yeah. Know? You don't want to have to make a whole bunch over. You don't want to make under. And these guys have paid for all their materials. So you want to make sure that it either gets back to them or we have enough to do a refresh when they come back to us. So. Here we go on into the finished goods, the warehouse. This is all paper material, really. Okay. It's, it's everything from jackets to labels to sleeves to more stickers. <laughs> more stickers. Uh, we're we, gonna have the right sticker. <laughs> yeah, that's it. For so, the right thing. All of these go all the way up and have just. Different artists, everything from the standard stuff, you know, you've got your white sleeves and, and your black sleeves, to test press jackets. But these are all different artists that we've gone through and done things with and have records and projects with. And they're either getting ready to go out the door or get, they're getting ready to come back. So and these go have over records once again. in them as well or just, just the just jackets? Print. Just, just the print. print. This okay. is all paper goods. Just checking. Okay. Over here on this side, these are all labels for each job. Okay. Set up and ready to go. Okay. And what we take this stuff and take it up to our press techs, Monica and um, Bobby and Ed, they all work together to get these pieces, make sure we have the right amount of labels, that we have the right amount of inserts, we've got the stickers and we've got the stampers and that all goes as a package up to the press techs. So it's like, they're the chef and you're getting all their groceries ingredients yeah. and you want to put it right there so they yeah. can make you the best sandwich you can ever yeah. have in your life right. so that's that's how we do that with everything that's back here got right. four rows of this and then you know another four high going all the way around the room so all of your finished products were back where we were a minute ago finished product is on the other side lined okay. up in front of the the wrapper Gotcha. And that's right. wrapped up and ready to go. That's wrapped up. When we walked past those colors that were on the floor, mm -hmm. that's another horseshoe shape. And inside that horseshoe, every day we will stage everything that's going out the door. So that's Daily got shipping. its own staging area right there. And records uh, move in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. We have a, this is really cool to look at. Bobby, he does uh, our warehouse. And the guys, just, like I said, everybody's an artist of some sort here. I played drums since I was seven, so, and been on the radio, total record nerd. But this is Bobby's collage 
And these are all albums that we've worked on. Wow. That have just bits and pieces that he's like, well, that's cool. Uh, well, look at that. That's neat. You know, so there's a bunch of artists on there. Some really wow. good stuff. Yeah, that is. And it grows all the time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Bob's rad. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, like that's... I said, just another mark of, of uh, another musician that we have here. Right. Another interesting personality. Yeah, that's really great. We have a uh, interesting since we do have so many people here and we run the shifts that we run. Um, you got to make it comfortable for everyone. So I'll show you our lounge, and uh, I think that'll pretty much wrap up the tour. Okay. As you you can't hear it out there, but they're listening to that Mountain Joy record again. So okay. on the floor, whenever whatever we're making on whatever press, you hear it all day long. Everybody okay. hears it all day long. So it gets to be like name that tune. You can hear yeah. three notes of that song, and then boom, yeah. there we are. I know what that is. There's Mountain Joy. Got some staff in here enjoying Lunch. their breaks. Yeah, sure. This is the lounge. Oh, nice. Wow. So yeah, like I said, a bunch of drummers and record nerds. Everybody can get on the kit. I brought that one from home because nice. I'm here more than I'm home most of the time. So <laughs> it's fun to get to play on. Um, we got TV and music, and everybody's got a real cool space to come and yeah, nice. You know, Great. get away, get out of the the loud, and uh, you know, relax a little bit. Very cool. Very nice. Back out this way. Um, we'll go back into the uh, the front room where the offices sure. were. All right. That's neat. Yeah, these are some of the the, uh, the print stuff that we were featured in years ago when we first started. And uh, believe it or not, these guys are all still here. Rain's moved on. He's in o uh, Oregon. He's a photographer. Mm. But Big Ed's here. Michael's here. Dustin and uh, myself. So... So here's our offices. We keep uh, test presses in here, uh, review test presses, uh, make sure we get our approvals, and package it all well, up. How many uh, get ready to presses? Go. Is it based on what they ask for? No, uh, our standard is uh, we do two for the client, right? Well, two for house and then five for the client, so seven. So when we're running a test, once they get the sound dialed in, they'll run maybe 15, 20 copies to make sure we can pick the best seven to go out. You know? Gotcha. Yeah. And as the test happens, you know, when you're barely starting up the project, you has to really literally come in the groove. You know, you have to figure out how to make it work and fit and, and – uh, turn into what you want it to be as a finished product. It, it, first time you put first one off the press, doesn't always sound the best, so. No. Yeah. What are the main uh, areas where when you have that happen, what are the, the kind of steps you might take to, to dial that in? What first thing you do would be to observe the stamper and uh, get a good look at it because basically all we're working with is source material. Sure. And uh, we're going to recreate whatever that source has. So check the stamper. If there's a bit of debris or um, anything like that, and that gets taken care of, some sanding happens, they'll put it back on the machine and see if that's relieved the problem. Uh, most of the time, that, that's what it takes. Uh, sometimes you can adjust problems with the uh, heat, time, mm -hmm. uh, temperature changes, you know, this is how long the record is dwelling, you know, under pressure. Right. Um, that's why those guys, they're, they're computerized machines, right? Mm -hmm. But the technicians that work work and run them, they're they're doing the really really hard work. Standing over there in the middle of it, when you're there for a long time, it's like a symphony kind of mm -hmm. you know a band playing. You hear everything. They all have their own rhythm and their own movement, and you can hear if something starts to get out of whack. Mm -hmm. And you just go back over and check and see what's going on. And I mean that kind of detail. And everybody that's out there checking those records, and making it go, is uh, what keeps it successful and keeps it repeated. Sure. Uh, um, do they have uh, some levels of tweaking they can do relative to anything? or is it Well, they can't change sound at all, oh, um, no, but I mean, um, they can change uh, 
um, like dwell times, dwell times they yeah. can change temperatures. Yes. You okay, know, that's what uh, I was yeah. speaking of. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's how the recipes come together, and yeah. the colors, of course, you know, the, get those final mixes. Yeah, yeah. making gotcha. sure they stay right. And at the same time, that they're doing that, that regrinds coming off that flash. You know, yeah. that would have been running, but we wouldn't hurt anything if we had been out there with that thing going on. But yeah. everybody takes it over, and they as they're you know, their um, assistant, their QA person is watching machines. They'll regrind that up and get ready to load up and go on to the next, the next one. job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's uh, that's really interesting. Now, you talked about the fact that you guys kind of grew from being more for artists into larger clients and that kind of thing. Uh, do you do you guys get uh, hit with seasonal things like before Christmas? You get oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've done uh, like October gets really. <laughs> we've done a. Uh, Christmas records, plenty of those, um, which is, it's kind of weird to be listening to, you know, jingle bells in August, you know, but, uh, <laughs> it happens. Um, and we've done everything from pop, uh, records, uh, with Christmas songs to, uh, jazz stuff, you know, sure. that it's all Christmas songs and it's a great time. Me being in radio, I, I can't stand Christmas songs just because of the fact that we had stations that would turn over and play it you know, oh, yeah. around the clock for, yeah. you know, from Thanksgiving on. Sure. But uh, it does change the mood a bit when people are in here and yeah. we got some Christmas music on. So yeah. it's not, That's yeah, great. we've done that. We've done Halloween songs, even Halloween albums. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Just uh, all different soundtrack sounds of Halloween, spooky sounds, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. They yeah. still make them. <laughs> they do. <laughs> what about, what's the biggest, uh, would you say the biggest launch record you've been involved in that was a, you know, something big that hit that was, uh, you know, done here or maybe done here in other places, of course. But Yeah. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Yeah. 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 A lot of copies of those. Yeah. Great songs. Yeah. 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 No, that's definitely one that had quite an impact. Yeah, that's for sure. So uh, objectives or goals for going forward in the company, I mean, in terms of uh, what's your growth been like for the last few years or what are you seeing happen related to your industry for you guys um we've yeah we've grown every year that's the the crazy thing about it is our uh, path has been nothing but up you know that's why we've gone from two machines to four and when we started we had five guys that were working here and you know now we have close to 30 employees mm. you know so i mean it's it's been definitely a, a rocket ride so to speak um, but i think justin will be able to talk some sure. more on that okay. and, and let you know okay what he sees about it because yeah. uh, not only is it the vinyl um, processing and manufacturing uh, that's here, um, the VRMA uh, that he's developed and president of is it's trying to standardize how we can make records all the way across the board. So you know that, hey, if it's coming out of that plant, it's going to be gotcha. a solid, solid record. No, that great. and we're trying to you know keep as much uh, as much of it as we can within you know, the United States rather than sending you know, you. jobs no. in other places around the world. I mean, we no. can make records better. No, we appreciate that. Good, yeah. So. yeah, for sure. What, as a guy involved in operations, what's the most challenging thing to you to deal with in, in that uh, whole sphere? I know it's a big sphere. Man, you know, we, I was talking uh, to Monica today to our librarian, and I was like, you know, the worst thing that kind of happens uh, in what we do is if things happen, release gets delayed a little bit you know what i mean and that's just you're waiting a little bit longer i would rather have you wait just a little bit longer um to get it right than to mm -hmm. try to rush something just so you have it on the release day but i'd say the most challenging thing for me um has been just the quirkiness and uh, the managing of all the different personalities and and people that are out on the floor sure. you, you have to you have to learn that, you know, everybody, especially when you're dealing with a ton of creative minds, you know, mm -hmm. it's everybody's got their own little thing. And uh, it's, that's challenging. We have no turnover, though. So, I mean, these, that's everybody, a question. I'm glad you everybody that. that's been here is they've came on board and the morale's great. And we all enjoy what we do. And don't take it for granted that we're getting to make, you know, real life tangible things for people to just pull this art out of the air yeah 
you know, the great thing about that answer is a lot of times people will answer those things with technical answers. Yeah. You know, I, but you're right. I mean, people at the end, we always say that they're the most important asset you have. But you talked about, you know, situational management and different people need different kind of yeah. approaches and strokes. For and, sure. And that's really critical because I think one of the things in general business is that managers more and more don't have time to work with their people. They're, they're doers, they're taskers, and, and their people don't get the attention they need in terms of that. And that, to me, makes a huge difference, and it translates right into what I was going to ask you about your turnover. Well, you really don't have... You had yeah. a guy who left to be a photographer, okay, but he grew... You know, yeah. that wasn't you know that wasn't a negative situation. That People do move on, but, uh, but the people side of it, you know, and passion is such a critical ingredient in work content for a lot of different reasons, just mental health even right i, I agree yeah. and and the the passion that you push for in this industry um what we make is highly scrutinized you know i mean oh, tell every, me. every, everybody <laughs> yeah. i'm one of those scrutinized yeah so. yeah and and we want you to be cool yeah. i don't yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. want to hear you yeah. say anything wrong with sure, it you know sure, sure. so that that's that's the goal i mean sometimes there's people that are just going to gripe you know it doesn't matter what it is there's you know? always that but um, I don't like to give them anything to gripe about. And yeah. I think by having the right people uh, in the right spots with that right attitude, um, it's going to get the job done. Yeah. No. I hate it when I go places and I see bad records or I buy a record and it's a bad record. Making records will make you look at records like no other. I mean, <laughs> I, I QA every record I pick up, man. So Yeah. I think, and that's become more and more, you know, the thing. People who, yeah, and they're more expensive. There's all sorts of reasons why people do it, but you really want that reproduction to be of value and to sound good. You know, I want I the record, person that made it to yeah. take pride in making it Absolutely. as much as the artist yeah. did in creating it, exactly. not just getting it through the press and getting it out the door. Right. That's not what I do this for. Or yeah, so, I've had one that was perfectly flat, but it was a little bit off center. Yeah. And so you could hear that. Sway. You could see that sweat. And it was like, oh, my gosh, doesn't yeah. sound. It just sounds awful. Yep. You know, perfectly pressed from a you know flat, quiet, but it wasn't quite on center. There's things <laughs> that you look for, sway, um, non-fill, stitching, non you know, um, that kind of, those kind of things. And when you've been looking at records for a long time, they, they it just jumps right out at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you pick it up and catch it in the light, and you go, yep, that one's no good, or oh, yep, it's all good. We got it worked out, changed the, you know, a setting, and now the stitching's gone. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, but there's some some people just don't have that pride, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a this is the way to do the business, organic kind yeah. of thing, and I think that's what's great. Well, thanks for your time today. Thanks, I appreciate Chris. it very yeah, much. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, nice you. meeting you guys. Yeah, here. And I dig your channel. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. So that's how records are made. I want to note a special thanks to Matt Mann, who was my videographer for these two videos. Did a great job keeping on task and, and doing some great work, getting some shots for us. And uh, makes a huge difference to be able to up the production value. So again, thanks Matt Mon for that. And always thanks to people like Dustin and Joe and those in the industry who were so transparent and open to bring the VC into that world to see how the magic is done. So I hope you like this video. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so by pressing on the bell. A thumbs up or a like is appreciated for that algorithm. And comments are always welcome. What'd you think? What'd you learn? Any other questions you might have that maybe I didn't cover? Always good stuff. So as always, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time on our next Safe and Sound Texas audio excursion. Take care, everybody.